From KTIV, Siouxland's News Channel, this is News 4 Live at 5. Good evening, everyone. The jury in the murder trial of Christian Bahena Rivera has now been sent home after a day of deliberations. That news just into the KTIV newsroom. Deliberations will continue tomorrow. Bahena Rivera faces four charges. First degree murder, second degree murder, voluntary manslaughter, and involuntary manslaughter in the death of University of Iowa student Molly Tibbetts. Tibbetts was last seen on July 18, 2018. Her body was found one month later in a field near her home in Brooklyn, Iowa. She was studying child psychology at the University of Iowa. Her peers described her as an energetic woman who loved theater, music, and jogging. Over the course of a month, investigators followed hundreds of tips across the state and nationwide in an effort to find her, eventually leading them to Bahena Rivera, a local farmer, worker, and illegal migrant. Bahena Rivera was formally charged with first-degree murder on August 21, 2018. During the trial, which has taken nearly two weeks, video was shown to a jury of a woman believed to be Molly Tibbetts running and a vehicle tied to Bahena Rivera driving by her moments later. Prosecutors described the crime scene in vivid detail during the trial, including that Tibbetts' body was found in a cornfield. Investigators also say Tibbetts' blood was found inside the trunk of Bahena Rivera, Rivera's vehicle. And looking at all the evidence in this case, looking at everything that we have, all of the circumstances, the truth here is overwhelming that the defendant murdered Molly Tibbetts on July 18th of 2018, that the defendant committed murder in the first degree. The defense worked to cast suspicion on Tibbetts' boyfriend, Dalton Jack, who they painted as a young man with anger issues and who had a tumultuous relationship with Tibbetts. They contrasted him with Bahena Rivera, who they said was a hard-working family man. They say Bahena Rivera was coerced into a false confession by investigators. What the police did is they had four weeks of nothing, and then they pick this man and who better to pick than an undocumented immigrant who doesn't speak the language who has nobody here to speak of to help him out and then you cherry pick the facts that fit your theory and you close the case during the last day of testimony at trial Bahena Rivera took the stand in his own defense and then gave his own account of what happened to Tibbetts during his testimony Bahena Rivera claimed that two masked men were responsible for the crime he was an unwilling participant he says those masked strangers forced him to drive his vehicle at gunpoint until they tracked Tibbetts down and killed her on a gravel road outside Brooklyn Bahena Rivera alleged these two men threatened his family, including his daughter, and that's why he didn't come forward to law enforcement, because he says he didn't know that his daughter was safe. The prosecution questioned him intensely, asking how the men got into his home, where they disappeared to, and if they ever contacted him again. Bahena Rivera answered he didn't know, and he never heard from those men again. If Bahena Rivera is convicted of first-degree murder, he will spend the rest of his life in prison. You can keep up with updates on Court TV and KTIV.com. Many of us woke up to rain this morning, but the big story has been the persistent cloud cover that we can't seem to shake. Meteorologist Joy Bettenhausen joins us with First Weather tonight. Joy? Yeah, we're tracking that cloud cover that's been sticking around throughout much of the day. A little bit of light sprinkles you saw on that camera out near Sioux City, but really not much of anybody seeing that rain. Again, that cloud cover is just sticking around. Here's another look outside. This is out over Spencer. Again, dense cloud cover. We've got to deal with it at least through the overnight, but there's some good news on the way. Temperatures right now, it's a little bit cooler than what we're used to. About mid to upper 50s in most locations. We're at 51 in Yankton. Wind speeds were gusty this morning. They have since backed off a bit. We're right now at about 10 to 20 miles per hour where we're likely seeing those 25 mile per hour winds near Storm Lake. And again, those are in gusts, so that's about 30 miles per hour. Isolated showers overnight, but we're tracking a rainy weekend ahead. We'll give you those details coming up in your full forecast.
All right, Joy, thank you. Most of last night's storms missed Siouxland, but the same can't be said for other parts of the Great Plains. Severe weather moved through central Kansas late last and early, late last night, that is, and early this morning. The storm brought reports of a tornado southeast of Hayes, Kansas, that's northwest of Wichita. It also downed power lines and caused widespread damage. Currently, there are no reports of any injuries or death from the severe weather. And take a look at this incredible video from northern Texas. You can see the growing tornado building in strength and size. As it crosses the road, the twister fizzled out before it could cause any significant damage.